Okay, my friends, you know who this is, a Roger from Mud Fossil University. Now, what am I talking about today? I put up a video either earlier today or yesterday, very just a day or so ago, about creation versus the Big Bang. Now, did everything come from dead dust? I maybe. Did it all turn into what we see now? just from a big bang of nothing turning into everything one day and all coming into this i find that hard to believe but anyway syndicato tv absolutely fabulous documentary here and i'm just getting into it and they are going into this steely that was found that was right from the time that velikovsky did his study about velikovsky is my hero i wrote a book about him and because he's lost in history. I don't even know if they'll mention him. But Velikovsky did all the research. He not only went to Egypt, he went to all, like South America, to India, to all of the ancient places. And at this particular time, 1500 years ago, or 1500 before Christ, which was 3500 years ago, the earth was literally in chaos. And Velikovsky's account of the Exodus, which is what they're looking into now, is that the, the Israelites literally escaped bondage. Not that they were told, okay, get out of here because you're causing us too much trouble. That is the, the current line of thinking. Now, I'm only into nine minutes here, so I don't know what they're going to say, but they have found a steely, and they're starting to talk about how it relates to the actual biblical accounts and this was from the time of Akhenaten who was 1500 years BC exactly what Velikovsky says this is very very intriguing now and I and I again I, I will show you some of the videos I did about Velikovsky because he is my hero and he was destroyed just like Tesla, just like I will be, and just like everybody, well, you know, I already have been. <laughs> but I think I'm going to escape from this because I have so much evidence. Now, a lot, well, anyway, they did too, and they got crushed, so who the hell knows. All right, I'm going to just run this for a minute to show you what they're finding here. All right, listen to this now. This is about the Exodus. 3,500 years ago, the Israelites are trying to get out of Egypt because they had a... a uh, the, the pharaohs were drowning all the male children of the Israelites so that they wouldn't have an uprising. And then Moses ended up being found by the pharaoh's daughter, and you know the rest of the story is how he became the leader of his people, which were the Israelites. And ten times he asked to be, for the Israelites to be let go, and I, the pharaoh said no ten times. Now, I always thought it was crazy he didn't just cut his head off, but apparently, I mean, he must have been some relation to the, we know, not a relation, but an adopted relation, so he remained headed. Now, let's just go into this. Um, here goes. Key to the Exodus enigma. Let's take a closer look. The Bible says that at the time of the Exodus, there was a great storm. Achmos Estella also talks of a great storm. The Bible says darkness descended on Egypt. Estella says that Egypt was enveloped in darkness. This is exactly what Velikovsky said. And he said it, it was recorded everywhere around the world. Huge floods, hailstorms, all kinds of things. Estella then says something very peculiar. Though the Egyptians worshipped many gods, on this tela it is written that the storm and the darkness happened when God, in the singular, manifested his power. The Bible describes Pharaoh, but never names him. Because of this tela, we now know his name, Achmose. And now that we know who he is, maybe it's time that we met him. This is the Cairo Museum. 
All right, I'm, I don't want to steal this guy's work. They have fabulous work. I'm going to uh, um, um, link it to this. And as I go through this by myself, I will maybe make a comment here or there. And again, I'm not, this is fair use. I'm not trying to steal anything. I, am try, I, want, to, I want these guys to, to contact me. I really, really wish they would. And I will put a link up on here. I mean, I'll put a comment that, you know, please, please contact me. Um, they're looking for truth, I think. So far, this is what I'm seeing. And that is very, very rare. So um, I have truth to offer. And it's supported by DNA evidence and CAT scans and specimens and, you know, a lot, a lot of research, not just guesses. All right? And I can provide every bit of that and stand behind it, and nobody can deny it. Because it now, now all this DNA stuff can be can be accepted before, even though I had it all done, including CAT scans, including anatomists, they just say, oh, the guy's insane, he's crazy, he probably spit on it or something. <laughs> I'm telling you, it was absolutely insanity. Six years ago, I had everything done. Anyway, I don't, I don't want to bore you with that. But I will make comments on this. The, the ones that are blind and, and, and cannot hear will never see or hear. So. If you're not blind, and if you can hear, then this is for you. If not, then go on your own way. But I can tell you one thing, I love you. All right, this is my video from this. I just did this a few, six months ago or so. But I did this whole, well, when I wrote the book, it was like seven or eight years ago. And um, he's my hero, Emanuel Velikovsky. Now, I called it Mud Fossils and Velikovsky. Minds in collision, <laughs> and that's what it is. And there's the head. There was Scott Walter denied on TV, destroyed. Yeah, I, really, I don't talk about this much, but I did write a book, Mud Fossils and Velikovsky and Minds in. I never really told anybody about it. To be honest, I just wanted to to protect his reputation once mine became untarnished, and I was no longer called Roger the Insane which hasn't happened yet here. This was about Velikovsky, though. Listen to this. this. This guy got screwed, which everybody does. It comes up with anything that goes against academia. Now, listen to this. Their interview on Velikovsky. Now, I'm going to let this play in its entirety. And anybody that comes to Mud Foster University is required to view this. This is important, because you will understand the predisposition of everyone that is in power. They hold the power over the people that are under them. And, and this is in every job, every academia, you know, people that are writing books, people that are giving tours. They don't want to confront or be confronted. Let me just tell you something. I'm, I'm going to cut to the chase, and then I, you, you're required to come up here and watch this. <laughs> I'll put a link to this. I'll put a link to both of the videos, but th this is 1950. He wrote the book based on research, not based on guesses, not saying, oh, evolution, absolutely, yeah, all slime turned into everything. He went back and looked at what, what they re record. He didn't make any big comments about what it meant. He said, here's what they said, and here's what happened, here's what the events were, and here's what the history is on every place on the earth and they destroyed him. He was on the top of the bestseller list, the top, for 11 weeks in a row, and they made him take it off the, off the shelves because somebody else took it over, thank God, but he had a hard time finding anybody. Some off-the-wall uh, publisher took it over. But they destroyed him after that. He never came back. They, they, once they had to hold sway and power, they want to maintain that. And the peer review system is a way to protect each other from criticisms of reality. It's called racketeering. Now, and this is what happened to, to uh, Velikovsky. And it's happened to me, and it's happened to everybody since forever. Since, not, since about 300 years ago. Since the Great Enlightenment. They called this the Age of Reasoning where we can reason through everything. No, they can't. They find a way to skirt through everything. No, they can no longer do that with the evidence that I present. See, academia is a denial system. 
It's not a, a, an educational system. It's not a system of of um, scrutinizing evidence. It's a system of of systematic denial, because anybody that looks at anything that is outside of what they their expertise is, because they, they'll be destroyed. And you cannot. You if you have one little piece of the puzzle, it means you read some other guy's book. Because if you go outside of that, you're done. Whoa, 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 that's not peer reviewed. Well, peer review is nothing but racketeering. And and grading is nothing more than intimidation. You don't say exactly what I told you to say, regardless if you come to me with evidence, I will fail you. And that's what happened to me, and I ended up winning. <laughs> because I challenged the professor, and I knew more than he did. He knew that. And he, he, he just still didn't want to give me the A. And I said, you don't give me the A, I will destroy you. And he's, he gave me the A. <laughs> Mud fossils, is, it's not deniable. So at this point, it's, you know, you could look at it a lot of different ways, but I look at it, you know, as, as a failure to do their, their fiduciary duty to the students. Anyway, and that's been going on forever. So here goes. Years ago, in 1950, an amazingly unconventional thinker astounded the scientific community with a theory that challenged many of its most deeply rooted assumptions. In a persuasive bestseller, this man presented a radical view of world history that linked research and hypotheses in such diverse disciplines as astronomy, geology, comparative religion, and archaeology. And he went back and assessed what everybody wrote. They, they, all this stuff is recorded, just nobody ever looks at it. They start making guesses about everything. It's absolutely amazing what academia does. And the only reason they do that is so that they can get a little name for themselves with some little concocted story that they make up, makes it sound like they're smart. And I'm telling you, that is exactly what was written too in the past. They will, they will exploit you with tales that they have concocted. It's exactly what's written. A storm of protest arose from every corner of the academic. Now, not only did he have all of that stuff, and I reviewed all of his re research, I, years and years and years ago, I fully uh, understood what he was doing, and I was appalled at what happened to him, and that really set me off, probably, to become the way I am. <laughs> now, just listen to this. It's, it's really disturbing, to be perfectly honest. Academic world, claiming that the theory was totally wrong. This opposition soon turned into an attempt to suppress the book and discredit the man who wrote it. The man is Emanuel Velikovsky, Russian-born doctor and psychoanalyst, student of the sciences and humanities, founder and one-time editor of the Scripta Universitatis series out of which grew the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. For the last 25 years, Dr. Velikovsky has been resident in the United States where he has continued his studies and advanced his theories. His first book was titled... Now, I just want to mention to you, he knew Einstein. Velikovsky was not like an unknown somebody in the woods like me. He was, he was in the scientific community, and they still destroyed him. Me, they just ignore. All right, yeah, I'm not going to go any further with this. You, you really should watch the whole thing, and I will make a link to it. But this is my, my bone of contention is that for the ones that are supposed to be investigating evidence that supports their theories or debunks it one way or the other. A scientist does not run away from, from anything. From anything. Even if it, re, if it points to God. That's the killer. That's the killer here. Because they cannot accept that the things written in the past have any validity whatsoever. We have been enlightened. We reached the age of enlightenment where we realized they were idiots. They wrote a bunch of silly things all over walls and carvings and statues. And they have a bunch of nuts. Well, the table, she's turned. Time to take a look at what you have claimed and see if it's right. That's all I am asking. And any scientist worth a nickel would jump at the chance 
to confront my evidence. And I don't come with no evidence. I come with 100% solid, material, factual evidence. Now, if it's wrong, then you show me it's wrong. And if it's right, then we can go from there. That's all I'm asking. Never have I asked for anything special, and never have I received anything. <laughs> Certainly nothing special. <laughs>